In this episode, we are going to revise some concepts that you have learned during the term by doing a test. Let's begin. We hope that you will do well. Now for the instructions. Read each item carefully. Some questions require that you circle the answer and for others you need to write a constructed response. Now here are the activities. Item 1. The theme, living things, life processes and the environment. The objective Construct food chains involving producers, herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. The item is a multiple choice type item and a constructed response. The diagram below shows a simple food web. So at the bottom we have berries and the berries are eaten by a deer, the black bear eaten by rabbits. Okay, the black bear also has berries and the black bear also eats a rabbit. The rabbit is eaten by an owl or by a red fox. So just so we understand what's happening here, the berry would be a producer. It converts solar energy into chemical energy and then that energy is taken by the deer the black bear and the rabbit the rabbit here would be a herbivore the deer also a herbivore but the black bear would be an omnivore because it eats both plants and animals so it has berries and it would also eat the rabbit but the red fox that would be a carnivore because it eats the flesh of other animals also the owl which animal would be classified as an omnivore would it be the red fox the deer the black bear or the rabbit and based on what we saw it would be the black bear the black bear is considered an omnivore because it eats both animals and plants let's now look at item b from the food web drawn above construct a food chain with a producer a herbivore and a carnivore and label each organism in the food chain we have berries at the bottom of the food web or food chain and they are producers the rabbit would be a herbivore and the red fox would be a carnivore all right that's the particular chain that i'm going to use of course you could have gone with the black bear here all right now the berries berries are producers please note that producers convert energy from sunlight to chemical energy in fruits all right so for example we can get a type of sugar called glucose from fruits. It may be classified as fructose, but the chemical formula is quite similar to this C6H12O6. And this is the basic formula for our glucose or sugars. Then the herbivore eats plants and it will have molar type teeth for grinding food. However, the red fox would be a carnivore. It eats other animals and all carnivores have distinct canine type teeth. All right, so this is our little um, food web to answer item B. Item two, the theme, living things, life processes and the environment. Objective, construct food chains involving producers, herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Item type, constructed response. 
Use the information in the chart below to draw a food web. Be sure your arrows are pointing in the correct direction. Now here are some of the organisms. We have grass, grizzly bear, berries, mouse, weasel and snake. Now where it gets its energy? The grass. Grass is a plant and the plant uses sunlight to make its own food. The grizzly bear consumes weasels, rabbits and berries. Again we spoke about it being an omnivore because it consumes weasel which is an animal, a rabbit, an animal and berries. So I've just brought up a picture of a rabbit. So we have an idea of what a rabbit looks like and now I'm going to look for the weasel so you know what that looks like as well. So here we have the weasel and the definition. It says the weasel, a small slender carnivorous mammal related to but smaller than the stoat. So let's go now to berries. Berries are plants and plants use sunlight to make their own food. Remember that the berry is actually the fruit of this plant. The mouse consumes berries so that would be a herbivore. The weasel consumes mice and rabbits so that would make it a carnivore and the snake consumes mice and rabbits a carnivore as well. So let's take a look and see what that food web could look like. So for item two, we could have a food web or food chain that looks something like this. Berries at the bottom, those are the producers and then we have the consumers going up. We have the mice that would get energy from the berries. The weasel would eat the mice or the mice could be eaten by the snakes that are there. And the weasel could be eaten by the grizzly bear. Now the grizzly bear also gets energy directly from the berries. So producer, then we have consumers going up. Now I have not included the grass and the rabbit on this particular chain because based on the list that we got, we don't see the rabbit listed here. The rabbit is not listed as an organism that is present in the environment. They say that the snake consumes mice and rabbits. They say that the weasel consumes mice and rabbits. They say that the grizzly bear will consume weasels, rabbits and berries. All right. But based on what they gave us here, the rabbit is not stated. So I have not included the, the rabbit there or the grass because we know that rabbits would would um, consume grass as well. So if we were going to put those in, then we could put the grass and the rabbit in and we know that the rabbit could be eaten by the grizzly, the rabbit could be eaten by the weasel as well. All right. But again, I did not put it in because it was not stated on the side of the chart with the organisms that are present in that particular environment. For example, we may eat chicken, but if no chicken is provided at lunchtime, we eat what is there. So in this situation, they've told us the things that are present in the environment. So we're going to use that information to populate the food web here. So item three, the theme, living things, life processes, and the environment. And our objective for this item is to recognize the importance of plants as food sources at the start of all food chains. Now, the item type is multiple choice. Now, it says, and we have to read this one carefully. A student examines the information in the table. So here we have a table. Remember, a table has rows and it has what? Columns. So we have a column here, organism, behavior, and we have movement, and these are the columns, and columns go from top to bottom or vertically, and our rows will go from left to right or horizontally. So we have organism T, U, V, and W. Now it says, the student concludes 
that organism W should be placed at the base of the food web to represent the feeding relationships in the marine ecosystem. However, the student later learns that organism W's cells do not contain chloroplast. All right, so first things first, what is important about chloroplast? So looking at the Encyclopedia Britannica, we have chloroplast and it's biology related, right? And chloroplast is a structure within the cells of plants and green algae that is the site of photosynthesis, the process by which light energy is converted into chemical energy, resulting in things such as oxygen and energy rich organic compounds. So based on that, we know that chloroplast is important for the conversion of light into what chemical energy, one of the byproducts there being oxygen. Now, how is this important? At the start of a food chain, we need to have a producer and the producers, most of them, 90 percent of them are going to be using chloroplast to change light energy into chemical energy. So let's go now. So it says, however, the student later learns that organism W's cells do not contain chloroplast. So there's a change in what the student understands. Let's look at this. Organism T feeds on U and is mobile. Organism U feeds on V and W and is mobile. That means it moves on, on its own and moves about. Organism V is eaten by organism U and is mobile. But organism W is eaten by organism U and V and is stationary. It says here, what conclusions would be appropriate based on the new information? And we have options here, A, B, C, and D. Option A, another organism in the marine ecosystem is a producer. B, organism W is a secondary consumer in the marine ecosystem. C, the role of organism T in the marine ecosystem changes during its lifetime. D, the marine ecosystem does not have any producers. Now let's start with D. All of the food chain relationships must start with what? A producer. You have to have a producer because the energy has to be transferred from producers to consumers. So D is out. For C, we're not really focusing on the role of T. So I would remove T as well from this equation. So option C is, is out. Let's go now. So we have A and B left. Now, organism W is a secondary consumer in the marine ecosystem. And I could not state based on this that it is a secondary consumer. Lining it up, I, I, I don't necessarily know why it wouldn't be a primary consumer versus a secondary consumer. I, I don't know. So I lean towards A, another organism in the marine ecosystem is a producer. Something else is a producer. Now, the fact that organism W is stationary allows me to think what other thing in the marine environment that is stationary does not move but is a consumer because if it's not a producer then it's a consumer so what in the marine ecosystem could be stationary it does not swim around it does not crawl around but consumes and the thing that comes to mind is coral so here we have this website here um oceans and find your blue it says here, when coral are babies flowing in the plankton, they can be eaten by many animals. They are less tasty once they settle down and secrete a skeleton. But some fish, worms, snails, and sea stars prey on adult coral. So 
they are eaten by something else okay so the even coral is eaten by something else so here do coral move that is the question that i googled coral reef technically do not move coral themselves are immobile stationed in the same place so they don't move so that backs up what we have in our chart so on this website florida keys um, national marine sanctuary the question is how do corals eat or get their food it says corals get their food from algae living in their tissues or by capturing and digesting prey so even though the coral itself does not move it has the potential to capture and digest food so it has a relationship with the algae growing inside their um, cells in their tissues or by capturing um, prey most reef building coral have a unique relationship with tiny algae and this is the name here the algae live within the coral polyps using sunlight to make sugar for energy this energy is transferred to the polyp providing much of the needed nutrients in turn coral polyps provide the algae with carbon dioxide and a protective home now watch this coral also eat by catching tiny floating animals called zooplankton at night coral polyps come out of their skeleton to feed stretching their long stinging tentacles to capture critters that are floating by prey are pulled into the polyps mouths and digested in their stomachs so using all of that information i am going to make the conclusion that organism w is coral right and coral as we saw can be eaten by other things and it is stationary but it is not a producer it is a consumer so another organism in the marine ecosystem is a producer item four living things life processes and the environment objective explain how plants and animals are interdependent in relation to the food chain the item type here is a multiple choice it says which statement best explains why many kinds of plants and animals can live together in an ecosystem a they all care for and protect one another b they have nothing to do with each other so they can live together c they are all part of the food chain and depend on each other to live d they all feed on the same things so they compete with each other for food Let's go with this. In a food chain, not everything competes on the same level or feeds on the same thing. So D is out. So for A, they all care and protect one another. This is not true. They actually feed on each other. So they're not really protecting each other. So that one is out. So A is out and D is out. Um, B, they have nothing to do with each other. So they live together. Um, that is not exactly true. They depend on each other as well. The answer I would go with is C. They are all a part of the food chain and depend on each other to live. Item 5. Theme, living things, life processes and the environment. The objective, appreciate that arrows in a food chain indicate the direction of energy flow from producers to consumers and the item type here is a constructed response complete the flow chart using the highlighted words in the information given below what is the correct order of the steps in a food chain use the letters to complete the flow chart a secondary consumers get energy by eating other consumers b producers use sunlight to make food c after a consumer dies, decomposers like fungi and bacteria break down the remains into chemicals. D. The sun gives energy. E. Primary consumers eat plants to stay alive. And we're supposed to arrange this so that the arrows will show the what? The flow of energy from producers to consumers. So we would put D here because it starts with the sun. So D has to be here, energy from the sun. And this energy goes to B, the producers, right? And the producers are the one that use sunlight to make food. Then E, 
the primary um, consumers they eat the plants to stay alive then after that you are going to have a secondary consumers secondary consumers get their energy by eating other consumers and then finally we will have C and C would be after a consumer dies decomposes like fungi and bacteria break down the remains into chemicals item 6 objective classify organisms in a food chain as producers and consumers item type is a constructed response and it is an extended constructed response and we go here it says a prairie ecosystem includes many different organisms such as grasses coyotes trees mushrooms snake and mice as shown in the picture below the energy needed by all the organisms in the ecosystems come from one primary source so all of the energy comes from one primary source so a identify the primary source of energy in the prairie ecosystem and here we have the things we have the tree the coyote we have grass the mushroom the mice and snakes we have the sun now the sun will be the primary source of energy b identify one producer one consumer and one decomposer shown in the picture of the prairie ecosystem so for a we said it's the sun b the producer grass consumer the coyote and the decomposer would be the mushroom mushroom are a type of fungi c explain how the energy from the primary source you identified in a moves through the prairie ecosystem be sure to include producers consumers and decomposers in your answer so the sun would provide energy for the grass to grow insects could feed on the grass the mice feed on those insects the coyote feeds on the mice when the coyote dies decomposers such as the fungi as in mushrooms and so on they would help to break down the remains of the coyote and other things that die in the environment as well now just a little article here on coyotes um, here we have what do coyotes eat look at the food chain all right more and more coyotes are being spotted within urban areas of southern california here's a look at what they eat barring mountain lands which typically do not hunt coyotes coyotes are at the top of the food chain in the southern california animal kingdom they are omnivores with a diet that consists of mice, rabbits, ground squirrels, other small rodents, insects, and even reptiles, along with fruits and berries from wild animals. So we see that the coyote will eat the rat mentioned in the prairie environment. So the prairie is a grassland, but because of various factors, more and more coyotes are interacting with residential areas that's how they would get to eat domestic pets such as cats and dogs item seven objective to appreciate the feeding relationships among living things and infer how environmental changes can affect organisms in a food chain again an extended constructed response now gray birds and white birds live on north island both types of birds eat the berries of the berry bush the seeds of the berry bush grow best after the berries are eaten by the birds and dropped elsewhere around the island white birds are also found on nearby south island the white birds of south island eat berries and the nuts of the nut tree rats are found on both islands and berries and bird eggs are the favorite foods of rats so here we have a little diagram it shows north island we see the birds 
two sets of birds the gray and the white birds we see the rats and we see the berry bush here then we see on south island we see the nut tree the berry bush we see the bird and the rat now only one type of bird is found on south island and that is the white bird and here we have the key using the information given above draw a feeding relationship between the organisms on one of the islands and you're supposed to name the island so i'm going to look at north island and we have the berry bush gray birds produce eggs and the rats will eat the eggs also the rats can get energy from the berry bush in terms of the berries produced and this is north island now remember white birds eat nuts but those birds are not on north island those birds are on south island so in this episode we did some revision we paid particular attention to the food chain and how energy moves through a food chain from producers to consumers now i'm going to leave a few links in the description below i want you to check out those links to articles and videos that will help you to understand the concepts presented some more all right guys take care and i'll see you in the next episode